Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about the sidecar extension. What this allows you to do is load videos into your player by triggering clips. So instead of loading them from within the player itself or from a video rack, you can just trigger them as clips and then they'll load into your player. Now, I personally don't use the sidecar module because I've found another way to do the same thing which I think has additional benefits that you don't get with the sidecar module. But I'm going to talk through it anyway, show you how it works, and then at the end of the video I'll show the other way that you can do it, which I think is better. So the sidecar module has to go onto an audio track because you can't load video files onto a MIDI channel. So it has to be an audio channel. So I'm just going to drag it in and I'm going to load some videos, just drag and drop them into these slots here. Now, not all video formats work with this, like .mov files, for example, you can't drop them into an audio channel like that, which is one of the reasons I prefer using a different method because with this other method that I've got, you can use any video format. But again, I'll come back to that later. But just something to bear in mind, if you do want to use the sidecar module and you want to drag clips here, they can't be certain formats. These are MP4s, so MP4s are fine, but MOV files I know don't work. Okay, so we've got Senators Robot A and B here. These relate to your player decks, so deck A and deck B. When deck A is highlighted, Whichever video you trigger is going to be sent to deck A. So if I trigger this, that video has now loaded onto deck A. If I go over to deck B and I change this to B, I trigger this video, that video has now loaded into deck B. And I can jump between these and just load them as I'm triggering them. So the benefit of this is that it's quite good for live performance. If you want to use a controller and you want to trigger your videos the same way that you would trigger your audio or MIDI clips, you can do it this way. Now, one thing I've noticed is that if you've got two video clips that are the same length, so for example, this one and this, not this one, this one, these are both something like 2 minutes 36 seconds or something like that. They're both the same length, basically. And what you'll notice when I'm trying to go from one to the other, it doesn't recognize it. So it seems to think that videos that are the same length are the same. If I go to this, it's fine. And, oh, it's doing the same thing with these. They must both be the same length as well. But if I go to here, and then I go to there, or I go to here, I can go to there. So I can jump between them because these are different lengths, but then if I try and go between two that are the same length, it doesn't work. So that's a little bug that I've discovered. If you wanted to get around that, you would just have to go in and edit the video and just snip a second off or add a second to the end. Basically, you just need to make sure they're different lengths. Let's take a look at this overwrite loop function. So there's two ways you can set loops in Zwobot. One is from within the loop editor window here. So if I just highlight this area, that's now gonna loop. If you want to know more about how this works, I've done a whole video on the loop editor, so go and take a look at that. But I can also set a loop from within the clip itself using these playheads here. So I can set a loop at the end. And if I trigger it now, sometimes it won't work if the video is already playing. But if I trigger a different video and then go back to it, now we've got a loop of this section of the video. So the overwrite loop function relates to the loop that has been saved on the actual video file. So to explain this, I'm just going to disable sidecar. And if I set a loop here in the loop editor, that loop is now going to be saved against this video file. So if I just open up my rack, if I load a different video, and now I bring this one back, you can see it saved that loop that I set. So this loop is saved against this video file. I can trigger this loop that's set in the clip, but once again, if I turn it off and I reload the video, it's gone back 
to the loop I set earlier because that loop is saved against the video file. So every time I reload this video from a rack, it's gonna go back to that loop. So if I want the loop that's set within the clip to be permanently attached to that video clip whenever I load it from a rack, what I can do, if I re-enable sidecar and I turn overwrite loop on, if I trigger this clip, so it's playing the loop set within the clip, and now that has also saved against the video file. So if I turn sidecar off, load a different video, and I reload that video, it's now saved that loop instead of the one I had set earlier. So it takes the loop from within the clip and applies it to the file, so if you load the file from a rack, it'll keep the loop you set there. Whereas if it's turned off, it'll keep the loop that was set in the loop editor when you load the clip. If we extend the module using this little plus button here, we get this re-index button. What that does, if any of your videos aren't playing or triggering, then you can click re-index and it should make them work. I've never had to use it and it also doesn't resolve the issue of two videos being the same length. But if you do find that your videos aren't playing, you can try clicking that. So that's everything with the sidecar module. As I mentioned earlier, I personally prefer to use a different method. Instead, I like to use the rack quick set module on a MIDI channel. I'm just going to drag that in. The reason I put it on a MIDI channel is because you can trigger videos with MIDI notes, as you can see here. I've also done a video on the video racks, so if you want to know more about them, go back and watch that video. So I'm not going to go into loads of detail about how it works here. So I'm just going to load some of these videos in here, like so. I'm going to use the same five videos. And what I'm going to do is create a MIDI clip for each of these notes. So basically the way it works is whenever a MIDI note is triggered, it's going to trigger one of these videos. So C2 will start playing this video, C sharp 2 will start playing this video, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to have one on C2. And... I'll duplicate that, Ooh, that clip, knock that up to C sharp, put this one to D, put this one to D sharp, put this one to E. And now whenever I trigger these notes, I'll just need to go to the A deck because you can see I've got A selected here, so it's going to send it to A. Whenever I trigger these notes, it's going to trigger those videos. So it works the same way as the sidecar module does, where you're still triggering them as clips, except you don't have that issue where if you've got two videos that are the same length, they're not going to play. So you can see these are the two that are the same length, and they're switching between them fine. It also means you can load up a better variety of video formats in here, because you can put MOV files in here. Speaking of which, one issue that you might find when you're using videos in Zwobot is that sometimes they can get a bit jumpy. If you're trying to quickly transition between videos, it's not that smooth. Now that's nothing to do with Zwobot, that's to do with the, your video codec. So I'll just demo this to show you what I mean. I'm going to set a follow action on these videos. I'm just going to go next and I'm going to have it jump to the next video on every beat. Now that's okay, but what if I want it to not always start at the first frame of the video? What I can do, I can use this beat functionality and change this to random frame and I've got it set to quarter notes. So on every beat, it's going to jump to a random frame, which means instead of always going back to the start of the video, 
each time it's going to jump to a random frame within that video so it's always going to show us a different part of the video so it adds a bit of variety this is another reason i prefer this method over the sidecar method because with sidecar it's always going to go back to the first frame of the video so because you can't use these beat controls with sidecar when sidecar is on so let's have a look at what this looks like now what you'll notice you can see it's a bit jittery it's not very smooth and that starts to happen when you're jumping between videos or jumping between frames very quickly the performance isn't that great this is due to the video codex now as robot recommend an mjpeg codec so I'm going to delete these videos. These are MP4 files. Now what I've done is converted those same video clips using an MJPEG codec. So these are .mov files. And again, if this was Sidecar, I couldn't use these because they're MOV, but because we're using the quick set rack, I can drop them in. And now if I do the same thing, you'll notice it's nice and smooth. So this is a very important thing to consider with Zwobot. Make sure if you're gonna use videos and you're gonna do this kind of thing where you're jumping around a lot, you wanna make sure you convert them to a codec that's gonna ensure smooth performance. I'd recommend using Shutter Encoder if you want to convert your files to the MJPEG format. It's free to use and I'll put a link in the description of this video below. Okay, that's everything related to the sidecar module. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about the remote module.